Does anybody love God's word? Come on, online, do you love God's word? Hey, man, I love to worship God, and I love to get into God's word. Today, we're starting a new sermon series called My God Is. Come on, someone say, My God Is. Come on, say it again. Say, My God Is. Come on, say it with an attitude like you know your God is great. Come on, say, My God Is. Whatever God is to you, come on, you need to declare that. Whatever God is to you, whoever God is to you, amen? Today, I want to begin by saying, my God is my refuge. Come on, my God is my refuge. Can you say that with me? Say, my God is my refuge. My God is my refuge. Do we pray for the word already? We pray for the word, okay. <laughs> just making sure, just making sure. I love God's word because once we, when we study God's word, God speaks to us, Amen. We get to look into God's word, and when we, when we look into God's word, come on, as we read God's word, do you know that as you read God's word, God's word will read you? God, God knows where we are. God knows who we are. God knows what we're going through, what we've been through, but greater yet, God knows where he, where he sees us, where he sees us. And I think it's important, church, that in the day that we live in, in the climate and the culture that we live in, and all that's happening in our world, and there's a lot that's happening that we're reminded of who God is. We're reminded of all that's happening. There's a lot that's happening. But we're reminded of who God is. You know, I learned, church, that when I'm going through the things I go through, it's important that I'm reminded of who he is. Because when I'm reminded of who he is, I realize that he is greater than anything I face. And he is greater than any problem I have. He's greater than any predicament. He's greater than any situation. He's greater than anything. And if you know God that way, as we get to know God that way, we're going to go into a journey in God's word. As we get to know who he is, we can declare it for our lives. We can declare it for our families, for our marriages, for our children. Come on, we can declare who he is. Come on, someone say, my God is my refuge. The word refuge here, the definition of refuge is shelter, safety, protection from danger and trouble. Come on. Has your God been that for you? Come on. In 2020, in 2021, has your God been your refuge? It means anything which one has recourse for aid, relief, or escape. When we look at who God is, you know what I'm excited about this series is that oftentimes I get to remember what God has done. But there's something more powerful than just focusing on what God has done. Because if we only focus on what God has done for us, we lose out on who God is to us. We lose out on the identity of who he is. Do you know, church, that God has over a hundred names? Over a hundred names. And one of the names we're seeing here that God is a refuge, amen? And, and one thing I want to re, remind you and share with you, whenever, when anyone makes a decision to accept Christ, Jesus Christ and their Lord, immediately God becomes their refuge. Immediately he becomes their refuge. And this refuge of God is called salvation. The moment we become born again, the moment we become saved, the moment we accept Christ, God becomes our refuge, and we receive this salvation. This refuge is called salvation, and it's through salvation, church, that we are rescued from the kingdom of darkness into the protection of the kingdom of his light. Come on, anybody remember when you were living in the kingdom of darkness? There is a kingdom of darkness, but when we save, we're translated spiritually into the kingdom of light. And now we can get an understanding and a revelation of the word of God when we open the word of God. I remember before I was born again, I knew that in this book, in the word, I knew that there was something that I needed. But when I opened it up, I didn't understand it. I knew there was something in it. There was always a book. There was always a Bible in my house <laughs> and uh, being raised as a child. And I, and I knew there was something about the Bible. There was something about this book. But the times that I opened it up, I, I didn't understand it. Why? Because I wasn't spiritually alive. I didn't have revelation of the truth. But when we become born again and God's spirit comes into our lives, come on, we begin to get a revelation of the truth and we get an understanding of not only what God's word says, but we get an understanding of who God 
is. So important that we get a revelation of who God is. And some of you may be watching online or some of you here today, you're going through a real difficult time in your life. Maybe you're going through a great time. You still need a fresh revelation of who God is. And today we're going to explore how God is our refuge. Psalm 46. Turn with me in your Bibles to Psalm 46. Psalm 46, starting at verse 1. Psalm 46. Are you there? Say, I'm there. If you're not, say, give me a minute. (laughs) All right, we'll give you. It's going to be on the screen. It's going to be on the screen. (laughs) Look what it goes on to say. The writer David, this is a God. This is the God of refuge for his people. And it says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Come on, has anybody needed God when you were in trouble? Has anybody ever need? come on, I've been in trouble before. If I can keep it real, I've needed God when I was in trouble. It's one thing to need God when everything is okay, but when you're in trouble, you need God, amen? God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in time of trouble. Therefore, we will not fear even though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake and swell. And when I first got saved, there was a song that said, God is my refuge and God is my strength, a very present help in trouble. Come on, God is my refuge. And God. It was these songs that carried me when I got to really know who God was. And as I began to really see, wow, God, you are my refuge. You are my safety. You are my protection. You are my covering. You are my deliverer. And this is what the writer was writing here. He's saying, God is our refuge. God is our strength, a very present help in time of trouble. In other words, he's present with us now. And no matter what state or situation that we are facing, God is present. He's omnipresent. That's who our God is. God is a refuge. This is a psalm of trust. And David rejoices. He was rejoicing in the deliverance that the Lord gave his people. He was rejoicing that God delivered his people in the midst of a hard time. God delivered his people and he was rejoicing. Do you know that most of the psalms was David rejoicing about the goodness of God? But then there was some psalm that that David was saying, God, where are you? I loved about David. One moment he had the victory and the next moment he got, God, where are you? (laughs) Sometimes life is like that, isn't it? But he was rejoicing about the deliverance that the Lord gave his people. And can I tell you, we need to let the enemy know who God is in your life. We need to let the enemy know who God is in our life. Whenever we're facing a battle, whenever we're facing a predicament, whenever we're facing something that seems overwhelming, we need to remind the enemy who my God is. Hey, man, I got three amens with that. Well, I'm going to declare that God is my refuge. And God is my strength, a very present help in time of trouble. He's present, church. And all that we're going through, he's present, church. And all that you're going through, I'm here to tell you that he is present, amen? He's with us, and he's for us. And while we believe in God, listen, it's important to pray to God and believe God for deliverance. But it's also, it's also good to praise him for how he delivered us before already. Come on, have you you delivered anybody before? It's important to pray to God for what we need, but it's also important to remember who he was and how he met our need in the past, who he is. And so while we believe in God for what he can do, let's remember him for what he has done. Come on, while we believe in God for what we're trusting him for right now, because some of us are believing God for great things, and we have not yet seen the manifestation of it. But can I tell you that the, but as you wait, as we wait on God, come on, can we give God a praise for what he has already done, for who he has already been? Come on, can we do that right now? Can you give God a praise for what he has already done? You know, oftentimes, oftentimes we focus so much on what we want him to do. But it's so important to look back on what he already has done. Oftentimes we focus on what we need him to be for us. But but it's really important, church, that we focus on who he is. My God is. He's the great I am, not the great I was. Come on, church. He's the great I am. My God is. My God is. You You have to fill that in on your own. My God is. What is your God to you? Who is your God to you? Oh, come on. Has anybody, 
Has anybody experienced the redeeming power of God in your life? We need to remember that God has redeemed us. Come on, some of us need a flashback of his faithfulness. We need a flashback of his faithfulness. Come on, we need a flashback. Sometimes, come on, sometimes we think about what flashback means. It means you get a glimpse of how good God has been in your life in the past. I'm so thankful that from every once in a while, God will remind me, remember this. Remember how I seen you through that. Remember how I delivered you from that. Remember when you thought it was over, but I was just beginning. Remember when I, remember when I helped you. Remember when you were about to lose it, but I, I was the one that kept it all together. Come on. I remember the things that God has been for me. I love in 2 Samuel, 2 Samuel chapter 22. If you were turning your Bible to 2 Samuel chapter 22, I want to give you God's word today, God's perspective on who God is. He's our refuge, church. He's our refuge. He's our refuge. Refuge? (laughs) He's our refuge. And I love how David constantly reminded himself about who God was. Church, we need to constantly remind ourselves about who God is in our lives. Be reminded of who he is. While you're, while you're on the journey of where you want to be, be reminded of who God is. He's, been, he's, he's a faithful God, amen? And I love that in this psalm, David was speaking to God. He, he was giving God praise because he was the God of his deliverance. Oh, if, if there's anything that I can give God praise for, if there's anything that I can testify about my God is that he's a deliverer. Oh, he's a deliverer, church. When I look at what he delivered me from, he is a deliverer. And he doesn't only deliver us out of something, but he wants to deliver us into something and to deliver us into his purpose. And it says here, 2 Samuel 22, verse 1, it says, Then David spoke to the Lord the words of this song. Oh, come on, when's the last time we spoke to the Lord? When's the last time we just had a conversation about who God is? And he says this, on the day when the Lord had delivered him from the hand of all his enemies and from the hand of Saul. You see, Saul was trying to kill him. Come on, and and I don't know about you, but when you have enemies in your life and God delivers you, it's important that the moment he delivers you, that you speak to him and say, God, thank you for delivering me. God, thank you for making a way where there seemed to be no way. God, thank you. I didn't see a way out, but you had a plan. Thank you. Amen. Amen. And this is what he said. And he said, the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. Wow. He made it personal. He said, the Lord is my. The Lord is my rock. The Lord is my fortress. The Lord is my deliverer. The God of my strength in whom I will trust. My shield and the horn of my salvation my stronghold and my refuge. Do you see that? There's a lot of mys there. My, my, my. Come on, somebody. There was a song back in the day called My, My, My. It was, that, that's not the right kind of song. But anyway, I'm still getting redeemed. I'm still getting redeemed. Woo. I might just bust out singing that song. No, I will not. I will not. I will not. David spoke to the Lord. He spoke these words. Sometimes you need to speak the words to your Lord. What has he been for you? Who has he? Sometimes it's good to say, God, I just want to thank you for who you are. I know what you did. I know how you, how you healed me, how you restored me, how you redeemed me, how you saved me and delivered me. But I just want to thank you for who you are. Or when you begin to thank God for who he is, something happens in your life. A shift happens. And here David made it so personal that he's saying, this is, this is the Lord. I want to tell you, God, you're my rock. You're my fortress. You're my deliverer. You're my strength. You're my shield. You're my salvation. You're my stronghold. You're my refuge. Hallelujah. He was saying, you're all these things to me and, and, and more. And more. But you know what happens a lot of times? Instead of us turning to God and saying, you're my We're asking God for more of something. God, I need more of this. God, I need more of that. God, I need you to do this. And God, and you know, and God is faithful and he's able to do all of that. But there's something about just going to God and saying, God, you're my, God, you're my rock. God, you're my strength. God, you're my healer. God, you're my deliverer. Oh, when you put my there, it becomes personal. It becomes personal because God is a refuge to us. He says, my rock. 
my fortress, my deliverer, my strength, my shield. Oh, I need all those in my life. We need all that in our lives right now, church. We need all those things. You know really what he was saying? He's saying, God, I'm remembering you for who you are. I'm remembering you for who you are, for who you are. And as your pastor, listen, I want to I want to encourage you this week. Remember him for who he is. And then say, God, I want to know you more. Remember him for who he is and then say, God, I want to know you more. And do you know when you want to know God more, it says that if you draw near to God, he will draw near to you. He will reveal himself to you like you never thought because God is a multifaceted God. Just when you thought you know him, he'll reveal himself to you in another way, in a fresher way, in a newer way. Come on, I need a fresh revelation of who God is. With all that's going on in the world, come on, with all that we're facing, with all that we're going through, with the troubles and the challenges and everything that we see that's ever-changing, what I'm so encouraged about my God is that with the ever-changing culture, we serve a God who's never changing. Come on, he's unshakable. He's unmovable. He's steadfast. God is steadfast, amen? And we need something that's unchanging in an ever-changing world. Psalm 91. Psalm 91. This is our foundational text here about who God is. My God is my refuge, amen? My refuge. Someone say my refuge. Ooh, my God is my refuge. Oh, he's my protection. Come on, if I pass the mic around today, some of us can testify about how he's seen you through. Some of us can testify. Come on, we need to have a good testimony service one day and just make it a testimony service. Come on, and and, and just testify about the goodness of God in the land of the living. Come on, just testify about how God has been good to you. Because if we don't testify every once in a while, we, we'll, we'll, we'll get the big head and think that we did it on our own when it was God all along. It was God all along. It was God all along. Psalm 91. I love this. We're going to go right through this whole psalm, and we're, gonna, we're just going to break this down in bite-sized pieces. Come on. Number one, it says here in Psalm 91, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Do you know that this psalm is full of promises? And if ever we needed promises of God in our life to hold us through what we're going through is today. And this first promise here in Psalm that is promising, God is promising to his people, and he still promises us today, he promises his presence. He says, I'm your God, I'm your refuge, and my, I'm with you. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High. Right in that first verse, there's two names of God here. The first name, Most High God, is El Elyon. El Elyon. That name is Most High God. Come on, when you can know him by name, when you know God by name, he's El Elyon. He's the Most High God. In other words, there's no God higher than him. Come on, there's no God higher than God. I can boast that there's no God. Can I tell you, there's a lot of gods out there, but there's no God higher than my God. He's El Elyon. And then it goes on to say, those that shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. He's the Almighty God. That's El Shaddai. Come on. El Shaddai. El Shaddai. The Almighty God. So when I'm facing trouble, when I'm facing tribulations, when I'm facing a mountain that I, I can't seem to scale, I just declare God is my El Elyon and he is, he is greater. He, he is the most high God. Whatever high thing I'm facing, God is higher. God is greater. He's my El Shaddai. He's the almighty God. Come on, someone say El Shaddai. El Elyon. That's his name. I love that. That's his name. And then verse 2, it says, And I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in him I will trust. I will say of the Lord. You see what I love about the writer here, David? He would say, oh, I'm going to say some things about my God. You see, when you know God in a personal way, you got some things to say about him. When you're facing a a challenging time and you're facing situations, you can speak to it because you can speak to the situation about who God is. 
And so when I'm facing a big mountain, I'm not going to talk to God about how big that mountain is. I'm going to talk to that mountain about how big my God is. He's almighty. Come on, he's El Elyon. Come on, he's El Shaddai. He's the one who's able to do it. Come on, we need to speak to our situations. And I love here that the writer says, I will say of the Lord. Or we need to say some things to what we're facing about the Lord that we serve. He's my refuge and he's my strength. Amen. He's my refuge, my fortress, my God in him. I will trust my God in him. I will trust. What words are you speaking right now? What are the words you speaking to what you're seeing? What are the words we speaking when we see what's all that's going on in the world? What are the words? Are we are we repeating what we see or are we repeating who he is? Are we repeating the word of God? And I love that he says, I will say of the Lord. We need to speak life, church, no matter the situation we're facing. We need to be life speakers. The Bible says that the power of life and death is in our tongue. We need to speak life. And when we speak the name of God, come on, as we sang today, as we worship today, what a beautiful name. Come on, there's no higher than the name of Jesus. And if you don't know all the names of God, you can use the name of Jesus. Come on. That is no, there's no greater name than, than the name of Jesus. Amen. He's my refuge. You know, back in the Bible days, but even now, when people name children, most of the time they would name them with the character of what that name meant. And some of us have been named certain names, and some of us don't even know the name of the character of the name that we've been named. I encourage you to look it up. <laughs> some of us will go, I'm going to change my name. <laughs> and I love it here how in the Bible there's names that are given to people as an expression of the kind of character that that person was. Oh, they were intentional when they named people back in that time. And many people are even today. There's power in the name. And when we, when we get to know the names of God, there's power in that. There's power in those names. And we're going we're gonna to explore for the next few weeks, we're going to explore a lot of names of God and, and who he is. Have you ever met a name dropper? You ever met somebody who was a name dropper? <laughs> You have met, those people are funny because every time you get around, they drop in people's names. And, you know, they say if they went somewhere, they drop in the name of this person or they drop in the name of someone they know or, or they drop the name of somebody they want to know. Come on, they're name droppers. And I always, I always fascinated about people that are always name dropping. Some, one day when I'm talking to a name dropper and they're just talking, I'm going to just start doing this. <laughs> and they say, what are you doing? I said, I'm just picking up all those names you were just dropping. <laughs> But you know what, church, if I'm going to drop any name, if I'm going to drop any name, I'm going to drop the name of the Most High God. If I'm going to drop any name, I'm going to drop the name of who he is. Amen. Come on, if we're going to drop any name, we can name, I can drop, I'm going to drop the name of Jehovah Jireh, the Lord, my provider. Come on, I'm going to drop the name of Jehovah Shalom, the Lord, my peace. I'm going to drop the name of Jehovah Rapha, the Lord, my healer. There's so many names of God that we need to use for whatever we're going through. And I challenge you today, whatever you're facing, whatever you're going through, I believe that there is a name for what you're facing. There's a name. Come on, I'm going to drop the name El El Yon, El Shaddai. You know what happens when we do that, when we speak the name of God in the midst of what we're going through? There's a shift that happens, church. It shifts from fear of what we see to faith by what we say. I said it's just from fear to what we see. Oftentimes we see things and, and we get fearful, but when we speak the name, come on, there's a shift because faith rises up when we speak the name of God, when we speak the word of God. The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Our, every time we speak the word of God and read the word of God and declare the word of God, something happens in the life of a believer that our faith is increased. So there's a shift from fear to faith, and I love that about God's word. And number two here, not only does he promise his presence, but number two, he promises his protection. Look at verse three and four. He says, surely he would deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. Come on, there's a lot of pestilence happening in our world today. God will deliver us. God will keep us. Amen. He shall cover you with his feathers, 
and under his wings you shall take refuge. His shoe shall be your buckler, your shield and your buckler. Wow. He promises protection, church. And can I tell you, if ever we needed to pray protection is today. Pray protection for our families, for our children. Come on, for our loved ones. Pray protection for our health. Pray protection wherever we go. We need, how many know we need protection? The greatest protection we can pray. I'm, I'm all about being careful in the climate that we're in, but I'm declaring God's protection over my life. Because there's just some places and some things I need to do that I know that I'm going to need his protection. There's some people that I meet that, that I know I need the protection of God as I try to minister to people in high-risk situations. I need the protection of God in my life. Amen? And I love that the writer was writing about the protection of God. You know why? He wrote with confidence because the writer had communion with the God that he served. You see, when we have a communion, we have communion with God, we can declare who God is, that he's my protector. Amen. He's seen him through some trials and he can declare who God was. And when you know that God has seen you through some things and he has protected you from some seasons in your life, you can declare God protected me before and he'll be my refuge even now. He's my protection. Come on, someone say, God, my, my protection. God's my presence. He's my protection. Number three, number three, God's my peace. God's my peace. That's a powerful thing. He's Jehovah Shalom. The God, my peace. You see what I love about God? God doesn't just promises us peace. He is peace. He's the prince of peace. I love how the, uh, verse 5 and 6 here says, it says, You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor by the arrows that fly by day, nor by the pestilence. There goes again the pestilence. Come on, God knew that in every season, in every era of history, there were always pestilence. There were even epidemics. And some of the things that we're facing now, if you read the Word of God, the Bible says that in these days, some of the things that we're facing would happen. Read Matthew chapter 24. In the last days, some of the things we're facing now would happen. But we can declare that God is our peace in the midst of it all. Amen? Nor the pestilence that walk in the darkness, nor the destruction that lay way by the noon. And I love that in the midst of all that we may be experiencing, we can declare God's peace. And if we don't declare God's peace, church, listen to me. If we don't declare the God of peace, we will be living in panic. Some of us are. Some of us are living in anxiety, constant anxiety. And we need to turn to who God is. He is my peace. I know I'm concerned, but he is my peace. I know I might be worried, but he is my peace. Come on, we're not to live in constant worry. We're to live in constant worship. And when God gives us his peace, he helps us through the concerns of life that we go through. Amen. I'm not saying we're not going to go through concerns. We all do. But there's something about the peace of God that surpasses all understanding and guards our heart and mind in Christ Jesus. That's Philippians 4 and 6. You know why? Because he says, I'm your peace. I'm your peace. I love what Isaiah 26 and 3 says. Listen to this. It says, you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts you. Wow. It's a promise, church. You will keep in perfect peace. Come on, if I, can, if I can believe he's my refuge for salvation, then I can believe he's my refuge and he's my keeper. He, if he's good for salvation, he's good for keeping me. And he doesn't just provide peace, church. As I said, he is our peace. Come on, can you declare that with me? Say, he is my peace. He's my peace. When I declare that he's my refuge, I can declare that he's, his presence is with me. When I declare that he's God, my refuge, I declare that his Peace is with me. His protection is with me. Amen. Look at, look at verse 7. It goes on to say, A thousand may fall on your side and ten thousand on the right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eye will you see, will you, you shall look and see the reward of the wicked. He says, A thousand are fall on the left and, a th- and ten thousand on the right. You know, and then it goes on to say, Because you have made the Lord who is my refuge, even the most high God, your dwelling place. No evil shall be before you, nor shall the plague come near your dwelling. Wow. You know, this, this next point is God's, God gives us his perspective. God gives us his perspective. We get to see what God sees. 
We get to see what God sees. And can I tell you, church, when we get to see what God sees, it trumps what the world shows us. It, it is greater than what we're going through because God's perspective is always greater than anything we're facing. Did you hear that? God's perspective is greater than anything. And I love that when we get God's perspective, church, listen, when we get God's perspective, we receive his revelation. When we get God's perspective, we receive his revelation. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, 9 and 10. I don't know, I'm not sure if it's going to be on the screen, but listen to this. 1 Corinthians 2, this is God's perspective. Come on, how many know you need God's perspective? We need God's perspective, church, in the day that we live in. Because if we don't, we will get the culture's perspective. We will be saturated with the world's perspective. We need to be saturated with the word of God's perspective. Because what God says is what God sees. And what God says, I'm so, that's what I'm going to repeat. And I love that when we, when we get God's perspective, we receive his revelation. The Bible says, the writer here is saying in 1 Corinthians 2, it says, but it, has, but it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those that love him. Verse 10, but God has revealed it to them through his Holy Spirit, for the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. Wow, it's God's perspective. Can I tell you, church, there's no greater prayer to pray here than this Psalm 91. But when you get to this point right here, you need to say, God, show me what you see. God, give me your perspective. Help me to see what you see. Come on, us parents, we need to get perspective for our children. We need to speak God's word over our children. Because many times our children, are, come on, can I tell you something, church? Because you've chosen to serve God, the enemy will try to attack your children. Because you've chosen to worship God, to make God your God, the enemy will try to come after your children. But you know, when we say, God, give us your perspective, he'll give us wisdom. And he'll give us insight and he'll give us revelation. And I love sometimes when God gives you a revelation, you can just step over into your child's life and say, hey, by the way, um, I want to share something with you. And it might be the very thing that God gives you to speak to them. And they'll be like, wow, how do they know that? Because we serve a God who's a, re a revealing God. Amen? He's a revealing God. He'll speak to you. God's perspective. Number five, we receive God's provision. Verse 11 through 13, as the worship team makes their way to the platform. Come on, someone say God's provision. Come on, someone say God's provision. Come on, don't, don't, don't check out on me now. We need God's provision for our life. Amen. Verse 14, you know, I've learned, church, that the things that God has provided for me, I mean, the things that I, I was able to accomplish in my life has mainly all been because of God's provision. He's provided my house. He's provided my the food in my refrigerator, he's provided, come on, he's provided everything in God is it's God's provision. Oh, when you get excited about Jehovah Jireh, the Lord, your provider, he's Jehovah Jireh. That's who my God is. And if you have a need right now that you're facing, just, just speak to that need and say, it's Jehovah Jireh, my provider. Jehovah Jireh. Look at verse 11. It says, and he shall give his angels charge over you and keep you in all your ways. And in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. And you shall tread on the lion and the cobra and the young lion and the serpent, and, and you shall trample underfoot. You know, the writer is saying here is, God is going to provide for you. God is going to lead and guide you. When we come under his shelter, when we come under his refuge, when we declare who God is, he will keep you in all your ways. He's a keeper, church. He's a keeper. He keeps us. He covers us. He guards us. He protects us. He provides for us. And lastly, God's power. Come on, someone say God's power. Come on, God is my refuge. Because God gives me power to face the enemy in my life. God gives us power over temptation. Come on. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. I encourage you to read that. There's no temptation that's taken to us such as common to man, but with the temptation, God's made a way of escape so that we can bear that temptation. It's not a sin to be tempted. It's a sin to give in to the temptation. But when God gives us power, he gives us power to overcome the temptation. God's my power. We see here in verse 14, 
because he has set his love upon me. Listen, church, don't lose this. And we're going to close. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him up high because he has known my name. Wow. Come on, church. When we know his name, he sets us up. When we know his name, he delivers us. When he knows his name, he covers us. When we know his name, he guides us, he leads us, he provides us his presence. Come on, when we, come on. It's our goal, church, to know his name. Because he knows my name. It gets better. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. And I will be with him in trouble. And I will deliver him and honor him. And with long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Look at all those things that we get to benefit from just because we know his name. Can I be transparent with you? And we're going to close. This is the first promise that I learned as a new believer. And when I first got saved, I needed Jesus desperately in my life, as I do today still. But when I learned the scripture, I was in a drug program at the, at the age of 19, just newly saved. And I was reading in devotions with everyone else that day. And this program called Teen Challenge. And I was in trouble, y'all. Your pastor at that time was in trouble. Don't look at me weird. You've been in trouble too. <laughs> I was in trouble. I was facing a lot of years in prison. To pr in prison. And I was in a program believing for life change. And I was reading this one day, still kind of getting to know who God is and this whole thing about Christianity. But one thing I did, that when I was reading this scripture, and when I read this, it says, I will be with him in trouble. It lit up, the page lit up in my life. And I was like, he's talking to me because I'm in trouble. He must know I'm in trouble. Listen, I was in trouble, y'all. Do you know what I did next? I took a pen and I wrote my court date right by that scripture. I lit, I, I'll show you my Bible. It's not in this one, but it's my first Bible. And I put the court date, Clarence, right there. I said, I'm in trouble and I need help that day. And when I went to court that day, they changed it for another month. And you know what I did? They gave me another day. I put that next day on that, next, on that scripture right there. And I put the date on that scripture. I said, because he knows me, he's going to deliver me. I said, God, I know you're going to deliver me. And I went to court the next month, and guess what? They gave me another court date. And I put that court date there on, the, on my Bible. <laughs> and four months, I went back and forth. My Bible looked like a coloring book. Because I was just believing. That was really the only hope I had. And I put that last court date. And I went to court. And God delivered me. God delivered me. I said God delivered me. Oh, see, when you take God's promise personal and you take his name personal, he'll deliver you. He'll provide for you. He'll protect you. He'll be your peace. He'll be your strength. He'll be, come on up. No. Everything you need him to be, he'll be for you if you know his and when that happened, I said, oh, God, if you can do that for me. Stand with me, church. The more that I knew his name. And I just want to challenge you, church. We need to get on a journey to know his name more. To know his name more. To know his name more. Only God would have known that 30 plus years later, or maybe whatever time that was, that I would be actually a chaplain to a program where I once was, 
same kind of program. Only God saw today that day. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no has it entered into the mind of man what God has prepared for those that love him. Oh, come on, you might be going through something right now, but could it be that he's preparing you? Come on, your pain might be a preparation for the purposes of God for your life, but as you get to know his name and you get to declare who he is, God is preparing you for the greatest season of your life. And only God's seen today that soon we're going to be streaming these services into a program like the one I went to when I was lost and needed to hear the gospel and needed to hear that my God is my refuge and my strength and that if I came under his covering, he'll be my protection and my provider. He'll be my peace and he'll be everything that I needed in my life. But only God knew that. And I'm here to tell you, those that are watching online, listen. Declare him for who he is. Stay with us for the next few weeks because we're going to know God and we're going to know his name. Come on, we're going to be name dropping God's name like never before. Come on, I'm going to be a name dropper. I'm going to be dropping the name of God. Come on, he's Jehovah Jireh. He's Jehovah Shalom. He's Jehovah Nisi. He's Jehovah. Come on. Once you get to know the names of God, there's over a hundred names. Could you imagine that? And then you get to start to witness to people and say, hey, I want to introduce you to somebody. When people start telling you, hey, can you pray for me? I have this need in my life. I want to introduce you to Jehovah Shalom, the God our healer. Let's pray. I want to introduce you to Jehovah Rapha. I want to, Jehovah Rapha, the God our healer, Jehovah Shalom, my peace. Come on, I want to introduce you. Because God doesn't have religion for us. He wants a relationship with us. And you cannot have a relationship with somebody who you don't know their Come on, church. Come on. Father, we thank you today that you're calling us deeper with a fresh revelation of who you are, not just what you do. And Lord, as, as Paul said in the word of God, I want to know you more, the power of your resurrection and the fellowship of your suffering, that I might know you more, that I might know you more. Let's worship and we're going to pray. I will exalt I will exalt you. I will exalt you. Oh, you are my God. Come on, declare that church. Declare that church. Oh, I will exalt. I will exalt you. Oh, I will exalt you. Oh, you are my God. You are you my hiding place. My sin. I will exalt you. I will exalt 
Come on, make it personal, church. He's your God. He's your God. Come on, praise Him until you see it come to pass in your life. Praise Him until you see the promises of God fulfilled for you, fulfilled for your children, fulfilled for your family. Praise Him until you see it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your word that's entered into our hearts today. Lord, as we explore and worship your name and get to know who you are, Father, we thank you that your word reminds us, Lord, that there's only one name where man can be saved. There's only one name where man can be saved, and it's through the name of Jesus. With every head bowed, every eye closed, and those of you that are watching online, if you've never accepted that name Christ into your life, if you don't have a relationship with God through that name Jesus, today's your day. Today you can say, He is my God, my refuge, my salvation. And if that's you today, maybe you're far from God or not where you should be with God, and you want to reconnect to that name so you can come under His covering. Whichever that is, if that's you today, I will allow me the privilege to say this prayer with you. Would you say this prayer with me? Say, Dear Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sin. I make you my Lord, my Savior. I admit that I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. I believe with my heart that you died on the cross and that you rose again on the third day according to the scriptures and I confess with my mouth that you are my Lord and my refuge and my strength I surrender to you God I surrender it all and I make you my Lord in Jesus name amen and amen come on give the Lord a hand clap of prayer come on is he your God is he your refuge is he your strength If you said that prayer, we would love to help you take the next step on the screen. There's a connection there. If you're here in the sanctuary, you said that prayer. All you have to do is point your camera to the screen and and, and connect with that QR code. And we'll send you some information or fill out a communication card. However you choose to do it, we'll have some material for you to connect you with your next step. Those of you that are online, the same thing. You can connect with that QR code. And we would love to help you take the next step in this journey with Christ. Amen. Father, we thank you for your word today that's alive. We just ask you to help us to walk your word out and declare that you are my God, my refuge. We give you praise and glory. And all of God's people said, amen, amen. Refuge Church, we love you. Go with God as you go with you. Keep declaring him to be your God. Have a blessed week.